Good morning. Good to have your company. Chloe Tilly with you until one o'clock this afternoon. Now, Peter Kay returns to the nation's TV screens tonight with a brand new episode of Car Share on BBC One. Now, you'll remember it was back in December that he cancelled all of his live tour dates due to what he called unforeseen family circumstances. Well, it's fair to say that not everyone was happy with the way that the second series of the hit comedy ended. This clip is courtesy of Goodnight Vienna Productions. Is still oh, Kevin's how infuriating! I just can't. I can't do this anymore. What are you doing? Where are you going? What you can't do? What? I can't waste any more time, John. I've told you. I've, I haven't got time to waste. What are you doing? I'm going. I'm getting out. Getting out where? Of your car. Of your life. Why? Because I love you. That's why. And it's killing me that you don't feel the same. What are you doing? Oh, that, of course, was Kaylee getting out of the car in the middle of a huge traffic jam after John failed to tell her how he really felt. Well, tonight's episode, which will be shown at 10 o'clock on BBC One, is the first of two specials, and they're going to be a little bit different to what fans are used to, as Peter Kay explains. We decided to try something special. What would it be like if we filmed an old journey without a script? Just making it up and basically seeing what happened. You shouldn't have fallen in love with. I can do Heather Small. Go on then. Run now! <laughs> well, I caught up with one of the show's creators, Paul Coleman, and he told me where the idea for the show came from. Tasha comes from the desperation of trying to work out what commissioners at television um, st stations wanted to um, commission. And at the time, <laughs> there was a programme um, called Roger and Val have just got in, which I think was on BBC Two. It was definitely BBC. And um, it was two people um, in mainly their kitchen. So I looked at that very naively and thought, oh, it's just two people, it's one set, that must be really cheap. Um, so let's start thinking of situations where it's two people in one set where it could be really cheap. And so it comes, it comes from that really. And then the idea came of um, looking at people in cars and thinking, well, that's quite an interesting, an interesting um, vehicle, no pun intended, to, to kind of put them in. And then it went built on from that for being, well, what about if we force them into that situation? Because if you look at uh, how most of us are with our car, I'll describe myself. So if my partner gets into my car and moves my seat or changes the radio station, oh, you, no. get, you get a bit irate. Yeah. So we thought that'd be brilliant if we've got two people who... Um, the rub is that they're actually not friends. Uh, they're being forced into a car sharing scheme from the, from the work to the works kind of trying to be more green. Um, and so that's where the rub came from. So it, it came from... Probably the wrong direction, but in, in it turned out to be a great idea. It came from looking at cost-effective ways to um, to make television, which was wrong because it wasn't that cost-effective. No, really. But it's a concept, isn't it? You look at it, you look at it on paper, a bit like Gogglebox, and you go, this shouldn't work. But it does. Yeah, it's interesting you say you, you think it shouldn't work because um, obviously I thought it should it should work and well, it, I mean, and it from, could work. I mean, but... from the sense of why would we want to watch what two people are chatting about in a car? Yes, on I, paper, I agree with you that, kind of yeah. go, well, I don't really care, like Gogglebox, but clearly, you know, that's been an enormous hit as well. Yeah, no, and, and the initial scripts of, of Car Show, we were really worried about would people stick with a journey in and a journey out of work and that's all it was. So we then made much more of the radio station Forever FM to kind of make that what we described as a third character within it. So really up the role of that and the interaction that John and Kayleigh had with that, but also to have the Daydream um, videos um, from both characters to, to break up that, what we, we feared would be quite dull of just going it's just and we knew we had some great lines and we knew some good stories in it but it's quite a big ass to go just watch them driving in and r driving out I mean there are tons of videos on YouTube with people with uh, their own cameras dashboard cameras and I'm not sure they get huge audiences <laughs> so we kind of the fear was of going will people stick with this so we, we put those the radio and the videos in to kind of break that up a little bit and I'm pleased you brought up Forever FM because for me that was utter genius the observational comedy of local radio so your background is local radio, isn't it? Absolutely. Did you start at Trent, is that right? That's absolutely right. Good knowledge. Good yeah, knowledge. Trent in Nottingham. I did my research. <laughs> and so, yes, yeah, so you'll, you'll know, and I'm not saying it's, it's based on Trent uh, <laughs> at all, um, but my background is also com commercial radio and, and BBC radio as well. So there's kind of lots of things within there that hopefully the audience are going, oh, yes, I recognise that. I've heard adverts like that. I've heard presenters like that. But it was also a real 
great excuse to play some really good music. Mm. And many people watching this, and I was one of them, would have thought this was obviously written for Peter Kay, it was made for him. But it wasn't, was it? You didn't have him in mind. No, so I've worked with Peter before. Um, and in 2008, we wrote uh, Britain's Got the Pop Factor for Channel 4. And then after that, I was kind of going, right, I need to do something on my own. I need to kind of think about an idea that I can just write um, in a room of my own, think about um, something new um, to kind of break away from Peter. And then Tim and I had written the first scripts of Car Share. And I said, I said, oh, I'll go and take it to Peter. So I was having dinner with Peter and I said, look, I've got these scripts. We're just about to send them in. Before I make a fool of myself, would you read them and see if there's anything in them? Uh, and he came back and said, oh, yeah, I think they're really good. Um, I'd like to be in it. <laughs> and so my plan of getting away from Peter kind of failed um, completely. And so we ended up having to look at them to rewrite them because originally John's character was mid-20s uh, and Kayleigh was, was younger as well. So we kind of, we had to rewrite various things for to fit those in, but also working with Peter and Sean to kind of really shape those characters as well. So did you have Sean in mind? Funnily enough, yes, not... This sounds awful, not to play Kaylee, but when I, I'd worked with Sean before because she was in Pop Factor as well. All roads seem to be leading to Pop Factor, but um, <laughs> Sean was in Pop Factor as well, and so she's a, and she's a really good friend. And often when you're writing things, you kind of steal things from lots of different people to to build a character on as well as your own imag imagination within that. But certainly Kaylee, for me, when I was... Um, typing the words for her, I was thinking about Sean, thinking, well, how would Sean react in this? And lots of lines were, were kind of stolen from conversations I had with her. So when she first read the scripts and Peter sent them to her and said, look, this, this, if you like this, this might change your life. And, um, and she was reading it going, I think I've said that. I think this is me. <laughs> so bizarrely, she was reading a version of herself on paper. So you must be a nightmare whenever you have conversations with people. And I know lots of comedy writers do this. They then go away and write it down. Yes. Nothing's private. Nothing's private. No, 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 that's not... It depends. I mean, you can't pick up every conversation. But there's certain people you kind of... You latch onto and think that's a really interesting way you phrase that or they're just naturally funny people. So you kind of do versions of that. But often it's more a mashup of lots of different conversations together. It's very rarely is you're writing down just verbatim what one person said because mm. then people would go, that's just me. That's just... You've just copied me. My mother would be going, well, what have you done with just put me in a comedy to sketch for? <laughs> now... If you had different views of the age of John, for example, and, and who Kaylee was going to be, did you always have the vision of the the love subplot, which has obviously been massive in Karsha? Yeah, we we knew that very much, and I think the initial scripts uh, for script one, we'd got we'd got to that romance faster um, within that, and we kind of. Um, we spread that out a little bit further so it's kind of it was still kind of unanswered at the end of at the end of series one but there was so much pressure wasn't there at the end of the last series people were really 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 not happy the way it ended the way kaylee got out and and was really cross with john yeah, and I think we, there was a bit of that of going. We wanted to surprise people and not just do not just do the obvious with with the storyline, um, but also because we're a little bit mischievous as well, if we're honest. <laughs> <laughs> but did you feel under pressure because there were there were petitions going round? It can't end like this. We want them to get together. There's pressure from your audience to write in a certain way or were you always true to what you wanted because obviously we've got these two episodes that we're going to see one of which goes out tonight did you feel that pressure from the audience um, I think we felt the pressure when we were writing series series two because series one had been um, so successful um, both critically and with audience kind of um, acclaim for it as well um, so we felt that pressure then but when when we got to the time where people were saying you've ended it in a way that I'm I don't agree with and we're going to sign this petition we'd already filmed the others so we, the pressure had gone <laughs> so it's too True, late because we didn't know that did we we didn't no. know you'd already filmed those so I was interviewed by this very station and they asked me the question going are you going to film any more? And I said, we're not going to film any more. And so I never lied to you, to your <laughs> listeners. Sneaky. Um, and if they'd have said, I'm not sure how I would have handled it, if they said, have you already filmed <laughs> this? I don't know what I would have said. Yeah. But, but nobody did. Nobody was that smart. So you got, you got away with that? We got away with that, yes. To take you back to when you first, you'd written it, obviously Peter Kay had got involved, Shana got involved as well. Did you think with those two involved this is clearly going to be successful? Um, to think back, I think you hoped it would be successful, but there's still a huge fear. I think once you 
you put something on a platform like BBC One, um, there's a little, huge expectations. And you see this time and time again with both comedy and drama, um, certainly, um, well, not just scripted shows, actually, entertainment shows on, on the main channels as well. I think there's real pressure to go, all right, come on, impress us. You put yourself on at this slot. This is going to be good. It has lots of trails about it. So you really have to be amazing at that. But also I think there's, from an audience point of view, there's less freedom. They don't give anything a chance. I, you know, you can watch any programme start in the first two minutes, people are on Twitter going, this is dreadful, what a waste of licence fee money, what are ITV thinking, what are Channel 4 thinking, all those things come out. And you think, you've watched two minutes of something. Mm. You'd never do that with a book. You'd at least get to the end of the chapter. <laughs> so give it at least the episode. And I think there's, so there's huge expectations. So what we did with Car Show was we... We knew that pressure was going to be there, so we kind of seeded it on uh, with screenings that we did, but mainly we did the, the seeding via iPlayer, so it was all available on iPlayer before it went on television. And the idea was that there was less pressure, less expectations that it'd be on an iPlayer, but the hope was that if people found it and liked it, like we all do, it's like you know telling somebody there's a new restaurant home or there's a film um, that you've got to go and watch. You're excited to tell somebody that new news. We were hoping people who found it on iPlayer that liked it went to then tell their friends about it. And we think that was you know part of its success, really. So are you one of these people who likes to read reviews or is that just horrifying? I... I, I, I when people send you things on social media, so they at you in, in various things, you can't you can't avoid them. But I try not to seek them out unless a friend sends it me. And I think if they've sent it me, it'll be fine. Because you, the, at the end of the day, you're not going to please everybody. We, we had some negative reviews for, for Car Show, both Series 1 and 2. Um, but in the main, we had positive ones. But it doesn't really matter. It's kind of... It, it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. And clearly, I mean, it's a huge hit. We know it's a huge hit. For goodness sake, you, you ended up winning a BAFTA. Yeah, which was amazing. I mean, what a, what a complete shock and, and, and surprise for us. Yeah, we were thrilled to win that. I think winning the BAFTA and winning the National Television Award as well was kind of those both sides. So the, the, the kind of your peers voting for you in BAFTA and kind of the audience voting for the NTAs was kind of a, a, just a real win for us. How much do you think that success is down to, and I don't want to take anything away from your writing clearly, but people listening to this at home will be thinking it. How much do you think the success of Car Show was down to a massive name like Peter Kay? Do you ever look back and think if I had got that 20-something-year-old sitting in John's seat playing that role, if it would have been so successful? Yeah, I, I did, without a doubt, it wouldn't have been as successful as it has been. I mean, Peter's been, you know, we've, we've kind of shared the scripts together with, he's directed that, he's, he's in it, so he's an integral part of, of this show, without a doubt. Um, and I, I, I don't know, you, you never know, do you, how, how long it would take, or even if you would have got it commissioned um, somewhere else. So, um, yes, it, it, without a doubt, I mean, having Peter on board really kind of fast-tracks this as a project and opens up huge doors for me as a writer it suddenly goes oh you're you're the guy you know one of the guys behind car share so that really helps i'm fascinated to know how it works behind the scenes and the the putting of it together you clearly write the script and then what sean and peter get involved and say actually we're not going to do it like that or they ad lib how does it work no no so i peter sean and myself for, for series two we 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 sat down and we we wrote we wrote these scripts together with lots of distractions of looking at youtube videos of madonna um <laughs> songs to kind of think would that be the daydream but we did we did sit down and we we write all those together and then we kind of shape those to become filming scripts so there's some things that we, we've got to lose and then we've got to add new new things in and we, we're working on them on set really so as we filming things we're thinking should we just do a version with that line that we threw away and should we do a version with another line because we've just thought of something now so we're constantly kind of shaping those um throughout the whole of the filming really so it, you you how much power do you have to give over in a way is I, I guess what i'm asking to them as performers because you've obviously got to have lines between you haven't you you know you're you're the talent you're doing it I'm the writer. I, I know that they were involved as well. But do you know what I mean? Did, were there ever times where they wanted to take things off in a different direction and you had to say, actually, no, we're not doing that? Well, we, we, it's kind of... It's a democracy, really. I think if we're, we're, we're saying we disagree with something, that's not right. And certainly when you're doing the... A good example is the improv bits that they may do. You're going, mm, you can't do that. It's really funny, but that's going to unravel something we've already filmed or something that's in a later script. But... You're all, they're always asking opinions going how was that was that right was that how we visioned it to be so because they're in the moment they're acting that I'm watching on a screen follow and a follow car so it's you're in a different place so it's, it's a really supportive team it's not a case of going this is the way it is and that's it tough you'll have to deal with it and also as a performer I mean I even know 
when I do radio interviews or, or TV interviews and I'll think, gosh, why did I say that? And you watch it back, it's actually completely different or you listen to it back. So when you're in the moment, as you say, it can feel very different to you observing it from behind. Yeah, yes, it, it can, yes. But I, think, I mean, obviously they can, they can watch things back. So if we say, or actually I'm not sure that's, you know, that's as, um, as punchy as it needs to be, they can, they can watch that back. But often you're just saying, shall we just do another go at that? Mm. This is making it sound like, you know, <laughs> they're dreadful and need lots of coaching. No, they're I don't not, mean that. I'm just all. fascinated by the process of it all. Because we don't get to see that, do we? We just get to see the final polished version. And I always think it's absolutely fascinating to know what goes on behind the scenes and, and how you all work together. Because clearly as well, is it tonight's episode that we see that is completely unscripted? Yeah, so, so it's an unscripted episode. So yes, so um, Peter and Sean kind of, we, we they just played around with saying what would happen if we just did the ad-lib bits that we do. What if, we, if that was a complete episode? So playing around with the journey completely unscripted. And because there's such, there's such funny um, actors, both of them. They're very quick at thinking on their feet and they make each other laugh. There's there's lots of warmth within the episode, but we had to really make sure that we weren't unpicking, as I said, any of the plot lines we'd got either in previous episodes or episodes to come. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because, of course, it was left with um, Kaylee jumping out of the car and, and being pretty fed up. So do you explain how they get back in the car together? How does it... I mean, I don't want clearly to give away too much, but you can give us a tease, presumably. So how they get back in the car in the final, final episode? Well, yeah, just... Who says they us... get back in the car? Oh, no. Do you know what I mean? Who says that? Who's giving that away? <laughs> <laughs> they have to. See, see, see we're, we, they, the, the story follows on. It's the day after the, the final episode you've seen on TV. So mm. we follow on from that. So it'll all become um, clear. And so the, the second episode is the second bank holiday in May, isn't it? The, the last right, bank yes. holiday. So... Is that, that's very structured, that's very scripted, that's your, your final vision for those two characters? Yes, that's the, that's the final bit of the story for them both, yes. Well, you've got to tell me more. I, can't, I don't know how I, how I can tell you more without giving anything away, so um, I'd, be, I'd be dragged into the office going, what did you give that away for? <laughs> <laughs> but amazingly, we do know, because of course Peter Kay... involves Kay... a car, the last episode. Oh, there we go. That's there's kind a, there's of a tease. <laughs> <laughs> but we know that Peter Kay did this, this uh, viewing, didn't he, a couple of weeks ago, and there were a lot of people who've watched this, and they have been amazing. Nothing has leaked out. I'm, I'm just so amazed by the audience. We, we asked them at the start, it was very clear to God, please don't share this, don't ruin it for other people. And they've been brilliant. I mean, the, the, the car show fans are fantastic. I mean, they really rally behind when we're, when we're championing for votes for people, things like National Television Awards. So they're an amazing bunch of people. So I'm just thrilled that they've not, they've not leaked that. I'm sure that in private, they've, they've told them mum or the brother and different things like that, but they've not shared it on social media, which is amazing. It is amazing. I mean, in this day and age, that simply does not happen. You don't have an entire audience of presumably hundreds and hundreds of people who are that tight. It's incredible. Yeah. no. The no. loyalty. It is, which is amazing. Yes, yeah, so I applaud them. <laughs> and so for you now, what what after car share? Because clearly it's it's coming to an end. You working on other projects right now? Yes, I've just had um, for Radio Two's Funny Fortnight. So I've just had a, a script, a pilot script within that. So that was I think it's still on iPlay. It's called Dog Days. Um, so we've got them BBC, and then there's a couple of other projects that kind of slowly moving along. <laughs> and you've already said you can't ever escape Peter K. So have you got any plans to work with him? Well, again? he's definitely not in um, the, the, the next thing I'm writing is just all women. So, so he's not in that. <laughs> well, we've that's seen him as a woman. Well, he yes, does a good there is, woman. There is that. You're right. I forgot about that. <laughs> that's scuppered that. <laughs> but nothing, nothing right now. Nothing planned at the moment. No, 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 nothing planned. No. Brilliant. Listen, Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much, and I'm so excited about watching the episode tonight, the first one. Brilliant. Thanks, Chloe. Cheers. Take care. Thank Thanks. you Bye -bye. so much. And that was Paul Coleman, who is one of the co-creators of Car Share. You can watch that episode tonight on BBC One at 10 o'clock. And then the final ever Car Share episode is going to be on Monday the 28th of May, also on BBC One. <laughs>